Hey, Alex here again. Now, in the last video I posted about uh, Z-axis stuff, I had mentioned the bearing trick, and I don't usually, I'm not usually a proponent of like quick hacks and things like that, I'm a proponent of doing things correctly, but I thought I would expound on that in case it helps somebody out. And since that thread was an answer to a question, this is like an inception answer and a question within a question type thing. But anyway, the point of that was to kind of take a shortcut and only replace like, you know, one part to have a flexible coupling that'll also support in the Z direction, as in like take the weight of the gantry and... I'll wait till the motorcycle guys go by. Oh, and by the way, the guy who's whoever it was that said in the comments I should use a shotgun mic to cut down an ambient noise. I'm already using one. Well, it helps, but within reason. The point of the bearing trick is to be able to take a flexible coupler that'll deal with misalignment of your Z-shaft while also being able to support the weight of the gantry because obviously flexible, flexible couplings are spongy. So if you put the weight of the Z-gantry on it, depending on how quick it moves and um, well, you'll see, I'll, I'll get into it right here. So anyway, let's do it. Oh, and for those of you who don't like all of the background and the whys and the what have yous, go ahead and skip to about 7 minutes and 35 seconds or so to just get right to the bearing trick. God forbid people make videos over 5 minutes long and maybe people will learn something. Just kidding. Alright, here we go. Alright, so let's say this V-slot rod here, this represents our Z-axis up and down, right? Then obviously we have our motor right here at the bottom that is going to represent with this motor. Duh. You usually have a mount that goes here on those types of printers. It's like a, a little plastic mount that just bolts on like that. So that should be pretty straight and centered. Now you have your Z-axis lead screw that goes on the top. Ideally, that's going to be aligned so that your nut is going to move up and down very nicely and uh, you're not going to have any binding anywhere. And let me use this smooth rod here to represent the uh, Z-axis lead screw. So obviously if our engine's a little slanted like this and our rod is straight, then you can see they come at each other at an angle and you're gonna have some binding at the nut there. It's also possible that our motor and our shaft can be pretty straight, but our Y-axis is at a weird angle, or Y-axis, Z-axis, and that's gonna put our nut at a weird angle, which is also gonna cause binding. And then yet another option is that instead of our rod being straight, it's gonna be kind of off-centered with our motor. So not necessarily slanted, but just off axis or out of parallel, you might say. And that's in addition to the possibility of the lead screw just being bent as hell. So before I get into the bearing trick or any of that stuff, let's talk about like making sure those are aligned. So it's easy to check with a pair of calipers, just the end of your rod and the side of your Z-axis uh, extrusion, or you could just take any old thing, a piece of index card, like a stiff piece of paper, or I'm just gonna grab this little scrap of 3D printed something or other, and then take a Sharpie, right? And take your piece of whatever, your card or your 3D printed widget, line that against your V-slot, and then mark the edge of your lead screw, and then check that distance at different parts on the screw and make sure they're the same. Because then obviously your screw is gonna be pushing against your gantry and you're gonna get binding to threads, um, also, even though there's a little bit of play in it to compensate, as you move up and down, if it's at an angle, you're going to bind down towards the bottom as you get um, you know, further and further wedging between your uh, motor coupling and the Y-axis where it wants to center your nut, obviously off-center in this case. So a lot of companies like uh, Creality and Anet and uh, you know many others, they use couplers like this that are called rigid couplers, as in they don't move left to right. They're meant to rigidly fix one shaft to another. And we don't live in a perfect world like that. So they're not often used for coupling, especially in things like you know DIY kits and things like that. But if they work, they can be used to reduce the parts count because all of the weight of the gantry can rest on this coupler and it's uh, it will support it. Now you'll notice this gizmo right here from Ruland, this is not sold as a coupler. This is called a double locking collar or a high axial load double screw collar. Now this is meant to take extreme weights in the axial direction. It's not meant to couple two shafts together. But again, as we've seen in a perfect world, you can do that but any little binding or any little being out of parallel or off axis is going to cause problems. Now I talked about this in a previous video, but one of the ways that you can tell a coupler from a collar is that let's say we have a collar like this with a set screw, right? That's going to be pushing against one side and then you have your shaft right here. Obviously that's gonna be shoved off center and you're not gonna have a perfectly round axial rotational motion. It's gonna be more eccentric like this. 
This gizmo that I designed and built for a future video uses an actual solid coupler. Now this used double rows of bearings right here and it's very precise in uh, its uh, alignment with what will be a motor. Now you can see right here, the shaft goes in this way and then you have a couple set screws on this side and on this side that'll allow you to center the shaft in there so you don't get an eccentric movement. And obviously that's not the case with these either C types or the, the types with the set screw that just pushes against the side of the shaft. Although this type can work very well if it's very well machined and the tolerances are extremely tight. Enter the flexible shaft coupling. Now all this little gizmo does is it has a little spiral cut in it and it's meant to be able to uh, slip over here, couple your stepper to your shaft just like this and then still have a little flex so that it doesn't have to be perfectly centered but these are not meant to support weight. As you can see right here, they're very squishy. So even if that can support the weight of your gantry, as in it's not enough to pin it all the way down to the bottom, you're still going to have problems in that your sway of your printer arm and motions and things like that is going to cause your uh, Y axis or your Z axis to uh, slightly go up and down, which is gonna result in inconsistent extrusion on your prints. This particular couple that I had, according to this kitchen scale, will take about 10 pounds or so before it bottoms out. So what's a girl to do? Well, if you want to have a flexible coupler that also has some way of supporting the weight, the way that I dealt with that is to use what I call a, you know, a bearing pillow or a bearing block, which is just this 3D printed chunk of plastic right here that bolts right onto the top of your motor. And then a bearing fits in the top right here like this. We then take our shaft, put a little shim on there, Put a flexible or a sorry a, a rigid collar on top of that to bolt it down and then all of the weight of your gantry is supported on that big fat piece of metal right there and it can still turn freely but that obviously is going to require you know a bearing some extra bolts a few standoffs to keep the uh, 3d printed part from touching the motor and melting uh, it's going to require you to design a block that specifically fits your motors and um, doesn't take up too much height while still being able to fit the flexible coupler in there and has some way of aligning itself as in the shaft of the motor with your linear shaft and your acme nut otherwise you're going to run into binding problems anyway so enter the bearing trick. So all you're actually going to need right here is a ball bearing in addition to your flexible coupler. Now this one measures 6.32 ish, 6.34. It's a quarter inch bearing. All you really need is something that's going to be bigger than your five millimeter shafts so that it doesn't fall through. Now we're going to take our flexible coupler and stick it on there as normal and then um, center it up. And if you'll notice, these flexible couplings from uh, Open Builds, they have not only the clamping screws, but they also have the centering set screws right here, which is very nice. So thread that out a little bit so that we're gonna be centered and then tighten it down on the side. And when you're done with that, take your ball bearing and drop it in. There you go, that's it. That's the bearing hack. So let me put the shaft in here and then I'll show you what we're talking about. Now, instead of squashing the flexible coupler, the entire weight is resting on that bearing. So you see right here, I can't compress it. But if you have a um, angle, or I'm sorry, if you have a lead screw that's slightly off kilter, you're still going to be able to move around because that's going to pivot on that ball bearing and still carry the weight. So there you go. Now, it's not a perfect solution, and you absolutely should make sure everything is aligned before you go to things like this. But as you can see right here, it will help you a little bit when that angle is goofy or if your nut's a little off kilter or something like that. Oh, and if you do find yourself needing a lock collar for these Acme screws, here's one that uh, I 3D printed. Um, I'll toss a link up to the Thingiverse file where I posted it, and um, that works pretty well, and it's free as opposed to these collars that cost, like, starting at 12 bucks, then you go all the way up to, like, 100 bucks for the crazy precision ones. So that can be used as your, uh, your lock collar for like a bearing pillow arrangement like this, or you can just use it to clamp to the top of the rod to make it easier for you to turn by hand if you want to do that during your alignment. And I'll post links in the comments to these couplers on both the Open Builds Parts Store and Amazon for you. And I won't bother posting a link to a ball bearing because I just get them at the hardware store for like 20 cents. So we're actually done now, but if you will permit me just a small rant, I know some of you are going to try this and it's not going to work for you and you're going to get pissed off two possible reasons for that. Number one, you might have axial alignment issues that are really bad like this, as in they're out of parallel with each other. In that case, align your printer first. 
because these flexible couplers of this type are supposed to deal with alignment issues at an angle like this, not out of parallel issues, but they can help a little bit. The reason for that being is these nuts have a little bit of play in them like this. So if your shafts are slightly out of alignment like this, here's your coupler in the middle, then you have your nut right here. Well, that's gonna be your pivot point. So right here, if we have our motor shaft, and then our shaft is out of alignment slightly, it's going to manifest itself at an angle and then the coupler should be able to take care of that. That's only if it's fairly slight. Again, align your printer first. That won't work quite so well if you use something like an anti-backlash nut that holds it fairly rigidly in the middle, but that's a subject for a different video. And then the second point is, I said nut, so let's talk about the nut a little bit, because that could be the problem as well. Here's a screenshot of uh, SDPSI's website. They do a lot of like, you know, linear motion type stuff. And as they rightly point out down here at the bottom, bronze nuts are for high loading capacity. Plastic nuts are fine for things like 3D printers and things like that. And in addition to that, brass nuts require tellurimications. And bear in mind, that's for super expensive fancy nuts that are made out of, you know, bronze that has a properly low friction coefficient for this type of use and is machined well and burnished inside. This is that brass, not lubricated bronze nut that I was showing you under a microscope. And as you can see, the machining inside is just a freaking horror show. I mean, not only is it not burnished, but you can straight up see the marks. So if you have a poorly machined nut and it's made out of the wrong stuff and you haven't lubricated it, don't blame me when it don't work. Thanks for checking that out. Hope it helped a few people. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. And I've been working these last few days on um, outlining everything that I need to do for breaking down the different parts of the 3D printer design thing from the uh, live stream. So it's going to be a whole like, you know, design series type thing. So if you want to, you know, make your own printer, what considerations you want to make and uh, my thought processes along the way. So hopefully that kind of sheds a light on somebody who just, you know, doesn't know where to start. But anyhow, thanks a lot for watching. And until the next video, get out there and make something awesome.